OK. OK, this works. Uh, let's get started. Um, we're going to wrap up the output stages today and then start on the feedback. Um, we talked last time about class A, class B, class AB type stages. I'll give you a few more sort of practical realizations in uh, bipolars, and then we'll look at um, some of the more involved CMOS variants. Um, so if we look at uh, the practical realizations with BJTs, um, for example, the first one um, in 709 um, op amp circuit, this is uh, class B. We have the push pull. And then just biasing the gate, the base, and another one. can label this node as V1. So um, at quiescent point, we said that VO is zero. So uh, there's no current uh, going through the RL. And then just by the symmetry of the two junctions, V1 will also be uh, equal to zero at that point. So if you're looking at um, sort of IC3 will be um, VCC minus V1. It's basically same as current that flows through R1. Um, so this is zero, so it's approximately VCC over R1. Um, if we look at during operation, um, our VCC um, can write a KVL from VCC all the way to the output. Um, so maybe let me just write it from here. Um, so VCC equals um, I base one um, times R one plus VBE one times um, v, uh, plus V out. Plus, this is one extreme. Um, VO plus is kind of the max voltage you'll be able to get. So um, if you start increasing VO through VBE, it's going to start pushing this node up. Um, and then, um, getting all the current. Um, so for VO plus, we can write that um, IB1, so in this case, Q3 is essentially going to be in cutoff because all the current is going uh, through the base, so nothing is going through Q3. So then IB1 um, will be VO plus over RL, that's essentially the emitter current or the IO, and then divided by beta F. Okay. So from here we can kind of derive, um, I guess, okay. VO plus will be um, VCC minus VBE1 um, over 1 plus R1 over um, beta FRL. So this is the max voltage that we'll be able to get at the output as the output voltage increases. Now the VO minus will be determined by 
how much can you push VO down that through this Q2 VBE uh, pushes VCE into VC sat. Right. So I'll have minus VCC plus VCE um, 3 sat plus VBE um, 2. So this will be the minimum voltage. Again, just going going back through through VO plus calculation, um, I hope you see what's going on. As this voltage is increasing, the cur the current here is also increasing, right? And then base current here, even though you're dividing by uh, one plus beta, the base current also needs to increase. And at some point, uh, the base current uh, increasing will take out all the current, if this, is, if this current is IQ, will take all of this current this way instead of going any current going down. So that's the condition for Q3 being off, right? OK, another topology. Um, so this is class B because we don't have any diodes in between. Um, Another topology is um, class AB, and this is um, example is simplified from 741, sort of the workhorse uh, or the op-amps for many years. So take a look at that one. Sort of what we already covered, um, but there's one little twist. So this is the output stage. Um, sorry. Now we have the two diodes that will make the class AB operation. And then this is just uh, another stage. So we'll have VI here and V bias here. So the first stage is common emitter, and then it goes into emitter follower and then another uh, push pull. Um, this is not such a surprising configuration, except that the, the way these two diodes are realized is the following. So we'll have the two diodes. When we did them before, we saw that if you just build them out of diode connected um, transistors, you'll have to match um, um, okay, I think there's a bit of a mistake. Uh, let me just draw this. Um, is better. Um, so this version over here uh, essentially would match the VBEs over here. But then you would have to adjust the ISs, meaning the areas of the, of the emitter, uh, to be able to uh, proportionally match this current versus how much more output current you want to have. So there was a little bit of a constraint there. And you needed to have like reasonably large area, both in the 
pre-driver stage and the output stage to be able to do it. So the uh, smart way to um, relax that constraint is to build these two diodes in the following fashion. So you, you build one, one of these um, as a diode connected, and then another one build like this. So by adjusting this R, so this is now, um, you can go and say this is a, a bleed resistor. Okay. Um, and then we'll say this is the big current, and this is the small I. So by choosing now the resistor, um, you can kind of tweak the ratio of this current, uh, of the big current that you're pulling through the diode versus small current that you're pulling to, through the, um, the other device in order to be able to adjust the overall voltage here um, to map into the two VBEs that you want to project to the output. We're not going to go through the derivation, but you may get it in a homework or something. So uh, just keep in mind. Um, another sort of uh, set of ways of doing it is, of course, you can do all this in CMOS. Um, but as we'll see, straight copy uh, of these concepts, just like tr transistor by transistor, really are not very good um, in terms of the output swing performance. But we'll draw it anyway, just so you have it. Um, of course, in the output stage, we'll have the emitter follower, and then And then here we have the the same topology to two diode connected um, transistors matching the VGSs of M1 and M2, and so. Same condition we have as in with the uh, bipolars at VGS5 and VGS4 are matching VGS1 and VGS2. So in as VO equals zero, we're also assuming that this point is going to be balanced. At, uh, so VG1 is zero. And then all transistors conduct the same current on both sides. So um, ID4 equals ID5, um, absolute value. And ID1 equals ID2 value. And then you can go and write, just from this equation, write, um, assuming the thresholds are um, matched, so VTH and, and you have VTH piece for M, M2 and M5, then you get kind of just the overdrive voltages. So 2ID4 over K prime W over L4 plus 2ID4 K prime W over L five, because it's the same current flowing through both. And then we have two ID one, 
I guess we can write one is um, Kn and another one is, is Kp. Prime W over L2. So from this, if you solve for ID1, that will be ID4 times um, a ratio of square roots. And then here we'll have um, 1 over K prime W over L1 over K prime W over L2. This is N, this is P. All that squared. And then uh, in the denominator, um, sorry, ID4, this is 4, 4 and 5. And then th here we have um, Kn prime W over L1, Kp prime W over L2. And again, this is, again, squared. So the nice thing about this is that this output current, which is your quiescent um, uh, output stage, is well controlled uh, by ID4, which is what we set through the, through the bias. Um, as well as sizes. Um, that we dial into W4 uh, and uh, WL4 and WL5. If so for a, of a, a given size that we want here, we can amortize the amount of current that we're burning in the, in the pre-driver stage with the area that we're consuming for the two transistors. Um, one of the, while that's a convenient feature, one of the big problems is that um, the output range that we're going to have here is not going to be as big as we have it on the bipolar, simply because we have this VGS drop that will have to happen um, in order to keep this guy uh, in saturation. So let's take a look at that. Um, so VO will be VDD minus VDS3. VDS, so 3 is um, here our current source. So we have to guarantee that this VDS3 keeps the source in saturation. And then minus VGS1. All right, so VO max equals VDD minus this will turn into V over drive three. And then at that point, VGS one will be VGS one max. Okay, and will consist of VTH plus VO drive will be two times I times um, the same VO max over RL, over K prime W over L1, right? Now, this VTH will also be body affected. Right. So now you have this component, which is the largest overdrive you have when you have largest current flowing through the device. And you also have an increased threshold voltage. So that VGS is really big. And it's eating up directly into the max headroom you can get. Right? So that's, that's one of the downsides. Now we can um, try to reduce this value uh, by increasing W over L1. Uh, But what that does, it essentially increases um, 
the parasitic capacitance. So if you go too big, even though this is a, should be a very broadband emitter followers uh, or source follower stage, you may end up with a dominant pole sitting right at your output, just because uh, now W over L1 is really, really big and dominating everything else. Okay. Um, in order to kind of fix some of these overhead issues, uh, as well as um, get, get better full swing efficiency, um, you can use feedback. And so I'm just going to sketch this. We're not going to go through the whole topology analysis because we haven't really gone into analyzing feedback that much. But after we do, we'll come back. So I'll just show you the topology right now. Um, so the way you could enable full rail-to-rail -rail swing is that at the output, you don't use emitter followers. But you uh, actually use the common source, push-pull. Now we know that in this topology, obviously the output impedance is much bigger than, than we would want it to be from a voltage output stage, right? So we need some mechanism to be able to lower that uh, output uh, impedance. And so what we're going to have is add um, negative feedback. Error, it's called, in this case, we're calling these error amplifiers. Um, And then we're going to just connect the output here. Okay. And these will have some gain A. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to minimize the output impedance that we have. If we didn't have this, what would be the output impedance? If we if this was um, if this didn't exist, right? Hmm? Yeah, R, or ROP in parallel with RON, right? Depending what the, those sizes are. That's right. Um, so let's take a, a quick look uh, what the impedance here is. Uh, can anybody guess? Quick, do quick calculation. I'll give you one minute. Let's see who can who can solve it. There's no hint. Just. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is great. So hard is right on the money, okay? So yeah, you would say that, hey, this transistor, be, besides just giving you the RO right here, it's also it also has, you know, a GM times VGS, right? Where VGS is this voltage over here. So it, and even if I connected this directly to the gate, right, it would be kind of then this would be just 1 over GM. But since it's going through the amplifier, amplifier is kind of taking whatever it's sensing here, multiplying it by A, and turning into VGS. So it's kind of like we had in the, in the gain-boosted structures. It's kind of the same thing as if you were applying this directly to VGS, but had a transistor that has eight times larger conductance, right? 
uh, trans conductance. So it would be A times GM. So that means that the, whatever happens at the output, the current source is reacting with A times GM, which is then 1 over AGM, right? And then you have two of those in parallel. So indeed, if you go and kind of apply a simple uh, test, right? Uh, in a, if we do a simple test from the outside, um, then you have something that looks like this. Right, your input is grounded, so you have two structures of A. And then it, what, what you have here is you have one source. This is GM uh, VGS1, where VGS1 is this. And then you have VGS2 here. And this is GM uh, VGS2. If I label these M1, M2, that will be GM2, GM1. And then we have this node connects the two. And then we have just RO1 um, in parallel with RO2. V test, I test, right? And then you can go and just write it out. I test is V test over RO1 in parallel with RO2. That's the current that flows here. And then we just have GM1 times A um, VT. That's our um, v, VGS1. And then we have, sorry, VGS2. Um, and then GM1 is, uh, okay, I think I did it the other way around, it doesn't matter. Um, but you basically get these two. And so your uh, VT over IT is then just um, 1 over GM1 plus GM2A in parallel with RO1 in parallel with RO2. Right. So indeed, no, this would be your uh, output. This is the term that dominates your output impedance. Right? So you've, turned some, you've taken something that is a very large output impedance structure, and be, with this feedback, you reduced it into something that's a very low output impedance. So it's actually a good driver. And now, it sort of goes, you know, from this point all the way up to whatever the VOV uh, of each of the devices are. So the swing is pretty large. Okay. I think this is sort of a good segue into uh, feedback because you've just seen how powerful it can be. You take something that is a common source stru uh, uh, structure and you turn it into something that has a pretty nice output impedance um, that you would expect from it. Um, uh, source follower. So we already touched a little bit on feedback topologies when we uh, looked at kind of the, the compensation. Well, I'll, I'll just do that derivation so everybody's on the same page, and then we're going to go and look into particular types of feedback by the actual physical realization. Um, so in feedback, what we have is uh, the input signal that comes in. Um, there's an amplifier here, and we'll say as the amplification. It amplifies the error signal that produces the output. And then the error signal is derived from some fraction of the output signal being fed back. And we're going to call this SF for the feedback. And then subtracted from the input signal. So this is, in general, what we have. And so. If you go and write it out, SO will be A times um, SE, SF will be F times SO, SE will be SI minus uh, SF, so SI minus F times SO, A times F uh, SE, and in this case, um, Uh, 
you're going to have that um, call this a times s e, which is um, so for him s e will be s i over one plus a times f. And so we can define what we call a closed loop. That's the closed loop gain, which is the ratio of the output signal and the input signal. And that can be written in several different ways. So this is one way. Now we can say that t equals a times f. So I can also write it as a 1 plus t, where a is what we call the feed forward gain, which is just the amplifier gain. And then T is um, the loop gain. That's A times F. Sometimes you don't explicitly have the value F, but you have the value T, which is just the overall loop gain. Sometimes um, you just have the value F, and your A is really not that certain. In fact, most of the, most of the times, we don't really care what A is per se simply because for large enough A, if you look at this equation here, uh, this will become one over F. Uh, or to, to write it like explicitly, it will be one over F times T over one plus T, right? And so if you look at this expression, um, or if you look at this expression, uh, For large enough A, um, ACL will be approximately equal to 1 over F. Because for large enough A, you'll get, get cancellation both here and here, as well as the, the in here and here, because the loop gain is also go be, going to be much larger than 1 if A is very large. Okay? And of course, this is a f familiar property for negative feedback in the sense that regardless of what A is exactly, as long as it's large enough, we can define the closed loop gain by the properties of the feedback network, not necessarily the amplifier itself. And then that gives us an opportunity to build one amplifier circuit and have it used in many, many different scenarios with different gains by just adjusting the feedback components. Right? Now, of course, um, what matters here is um, how um, the block F senses uh, the signal SO. Right? Is that S signal SO current or voltage? Um, as well as how it applies it. To, to create the error signal, right? Again, the input could be current or voltage as well, and the F network or that block has to kind of adapt whatever's coming out. If it's voltage, transform it into another voltage if the input is also voltage. If the input is current, it has to take the output voltage and transform to current, and vice versa. So, because we have current and voltage, of course, there are how many possible scenarios? Four, okay. Um, so we're going to define these as feedback types. And we're gonna have the S error, S output. I guess I can here say type. Okay, so we have voltage, voltage. Um, anybody knows how that's called? We have voltage at the input. Um, and you're trying to create a voltage error signal. And then at the output, you're also trying to sense voltage to be able to apply the feedback. Anybody remembers from, I guess, I don't know, 105 talked about that? Not, not, okay. Um, 
OK, so let, let, maybe before I tell you what it is, let me draw um, a gener sort of a general way in which you could think about this. So there's one box here. That's our summation box. This is V in, I in. And then that creates the error signal, V error. Goes into the amplifier. Then there's the sensing box or sampling. Um, people call it sampling box. I don't like it because sampling means like something's discrete in time or something. So I like to call it sensing because you're kind of sensing what what either the current or the voltage. Uh, this is the load. And that sensing network needs to produce the signal that then you feed back or convert into the appropriate quantities that go into the summation box. So this could be I feedback or V feedback. And you could be in the sam sampling sensing circuit, getting I out and V out. Okay, so if you take a look at kind of the topologies, how you would be able to, to grab this, um, if you wanted to do voltages, you would have V in, and then you would have to apply V feedback here, and then you would produce V error. And this V error will be equal to V in minus V F B. So from the perspective of V in, what would we call these two voltages if we're doing KVL, VFB and VE? How are they ordered? Are they in parallel or series? How, how are they called? They're one after another, right? Because if I'm going KVL this way, they're one and then the other, right? So. This topology is called series, right? Because the feedback viewed from the input, the feedback as, as an element sits in series with the amplifier, right? If I follow the KVL loop, these elements are in series. Make sense? Like, like for example, two resistors were in series, so I'm adding their voltages. So viewed from this point over here, these two elements are in series, right? OK, so same thing here. That's why we call this a series. OK, so in a voltage voltage, I know that I have to derive uh, VE as a voltage quantity from voltage input and voltage feedback. So the only way to do it is through this type of series connection. Right. So we at least know that the input is going to be in series. Now, if my output is voltage, how does the sam this sensing network look like? Um, you can assume that you know, um, here you you're not going to have um, well, in a voltage case, at least, you're not going to have any current flowing. Because when you, whenever you try to measure the voltage, you don't want to draw any current, right? In order to uh, reduce the, or present some very low load, right? You are always sensing voltage with very high impedance, right? So if you're doing that, you have now kind of your output lines. So VO is here, and then you would essentially just tap these two points and measure the VO over here. Now, in reality, your feedback network doesn't have imp infinite impedance, right? So there will be some small impedance here, in which case your IO out will, you'll actually be shunting the output, right? Because you are measuring in parallel with the load path. Right, so you're, you're taking off maybe a little, some current. But you're doing a parallel measurement to the output in order to sense the voltage. Right? 
So we call this shunt. Okay. So shunt means parallel, serious means you're in serious. Okay. So with this, we're going to say that this is serious shunt feedback. Make sense? OK. Um, I think it's the reason why I'm kind of emphasizing this is that you know, this may sound, OK, you're just going to learn shunt is voltage uh, uh, um, at the output, series is voltage at the input. But it really matters for you to be able to understand the topologies. Because when you see the real transistor circuits, you'll have to figure out which quantity you're actually feeding back. And based on that, when we do return, uh, uh, ratio loop and the techniques to break the loop, you'll need to break the loop to prevent that quantity from going forward, right? And for voltage that's shorting, for current that's cutting the wire, right? And so it does matter for uh, how you identify what the feedback is, right? So you need to pay attention to that. Um, okay, so let's say the next type is I feed voltage, but I sense current from the output. OK. How do you do that? What, um, since we're not changing the error mechanism, right? this will be series. But what, what are we going to call uh, the output network? Series. Right? So the same way I drew this serious thing here, right? It will serve me the same, it will serve me uh, the same purpose to, uh, to use it in the sensing circuit, right? In the sensing circuit, um, I'll just draw it here, right? If this is our load, right, at the output, and this is my amplifier, if my feedback circuit is here, then I'm sensing this output volt, uh, current value in this whole loop, right? So, that, so then I'm putting my feedback in series with the load and the amplifier, right? In order to be able to sense the current. That's why it's serious when we have the current that we're shipping out. Okay. And now, since we've decoded the topology, we can just say that uh, um, okay, uh, not so fast. We're going to have IV and then II. Okay, so let's take a look at, at this case over here. How do I create um, an error? So I have a situation like this. Okay, I have my I in, and somehow here I have to have my I error. What do I have to do with, with this input current in order to be able to create, on the same wire, to create a smaller quantity? Okay, so you're saying I need to kind of Steal some, right? OK. So this will be my I feedback. All right. So I'm just drawing here. So if I'm pulling some, I'm going to return some. So this will be IE, IFB, IN, right? This is all going through some input impedance of the amplifier, right? OK. So you see that for me to do current processing at the input, this has to be shunt connection. Because by KCL, I, that's the only way I can do operations on current if, I, if I'm actually putting things in parallel so that all the uh, different currents flow into a certain node, right? Okay. So in previous of the nomenclature, I have here shunt and the input. And what, what, am I, what am I going to have at the output? 
If I'm sensing the voltage, what's the output? Shunt, right? OK, and finally, for the last one, the input is shunt because I'm doing processing on uh, the currents. And then the output is what? Series. It's serious because I actually don't want to disturb that value. I just want to pass it through my feedback to sense it, right? So whenever I'm sensing, I'm not doing any processing on that current, right? Or any operations. And when I'm sample, when I'm summing, I want to have then for K, KCL shunted nodes, and for voltage for KVL, I want to have series, right? So we can even write for KVL and then KCL here. OK, so let me, let me give you, sort of go out and kind of sketch these examples, just so you have it all um, on. So we're going to do first series uh, shunt. So series shunt means what? What's the input? OK. And then what's the output? Voltage as well, OK. So if I'm applying V in, then feedback needs to be sort of added. Then I'm going to do a feedback as um, voltage controlled voltage source. So this will be VFB. This is going to be F times V out. And I'm measuring V out over here. I'm measuring it by the shunt network. So this will be shunt. And then this is going to be the series. So if we go and write the model for this, um, I'll just replace uh, this amplifier as ZI. And then over here, it's going to be A times, this is V error, um, A times V error. And then I'll add Z naught here, which is the sort of the output um, impedance. This is sort of the generic amplifier. So if we look at the, the equations, we're getting that v, v out is equal to um, A times V error. Uh, there's no current flowing because I haven't loaded it yet. Right. So, and I don't have any current flowing into here. So it's just A times VI. VI, which is the input, it's the V error plus uh, V feedback. And V feedback is F times F out. So this is V feedback. And that's VE plus F times AVE. So it's V error times 1 plus AF. So that's all from you know, standard stuff that we already kind of did uh, on the generic one. Now, the interesting thing is, if you look at the currents, um, this is the input. So the current is going to be VE over ZI. And IE is also from 
from here times 1 over 1 plus AF. So if I'm looking at Z capital uh, I as the ratio of the input voltage and input current, meaning once I time my amplifier in the feedback, what is it? What is its input impedance? Okay, then it's this VI over II, and that's going to be um, ZI, which is the impedance input impedance of the original amplifier, uh, open loop amplifier, times one plus AF, and this AF is T. Since AF is greater than 1, I am actually here uh, significantly increasing the input impedance, right? which makes sense. I'm trying to sense voltage. right? So I want as high, I want this closed loop amplifier to present as high of, uh, an impedance to the previous stage, right? so that if there was some, um, you know, if, if this VI was created out of, uh, some voltage source with its Thevenin Z source, then the maximum voltage is being trans transferred to the amplifier, right? If my input impedance is the largest. So this is kind of a general thing. In the, in the voltage or the serious input uh, amplifiers, I'm always going, my feedback is always going to work to boost the impedance so that I can better sense that input voltage. Okay, um, if we look at the zero, and I'll try to not get cut off. Um, um, we can short um, the VI. We're just doing the test. So we apply VT here, uh, and then we short the input. Right, that's our classical. Okay, that's not good. I think my computer just died. Okay, well. That just says, we'll do the output impedance next. Ah, OK, no. OK. Um, OK, two more minutes. Uh, it refuses to <laughs> do the thing. So the error, so if we short this, the error uh, plus the feedback will now be 0, because vi is 0. So then our i test is going to be V test that we applied from the outside minus A times V error, then over Z out. And if you solve this, you'll get that I test is V test plus AF V test over Z O. And that means that it's V out um, or, or V test 1 plus AF over Z out. And then um, your capital Z out is going to be just uh, V test over I test. And you'll see that that's 